I, I don't think I got into art. I think it got into me. I, I, it wasn't a choice. I had no uh, formal teaching, and I didn't have any anyone to actually push me in that direction. It it happened organically. Um, my uncles used to call me Little Brother Einstein because I was always experimenting and trying to see what would happen if I put this with this and, and what would come of it, you know. Every time I create a piece, I'm learning from it and I'm excited about it because it's brand new to me. Um, and each piece teaches me something different. Uh, I'm, I'm happily naive. Like, I, I don't, I'm not jaded about art. It's all, it's all like exciting to me. Growing up in Brooklyn, there's no other place I would like to have grown up, um, except maybe Brixton. Uh, and then also the time period I grew up. I came up in the late 70s through the 80s. It was a, <clears throat> a time, a dangerous time really in a lot of Brooklyn, it was the, sort of the crack era. But it was also a time of tremendous um, cultural movements. You know, I was, I was here for the beginning of the hip hop movement. Um, I lived in East Flatbush in the late 70s when, when the Rasta reggae movement was at its height. Um, uh, I was part of a, what's now called Afropunk, which was the black punk rockers. It's, it's amazing to see that the things that were happening in Brooklyn in, in the 80s and 70s are still affecting the world now. Graffiti and hip hop and uh, fashion. This block is... Um, uh, between two of the biggest housing projects in, in, uh, in Brooklyn, the Marcy Projects, where Jay-Z is from, and then the Tompkin Projects, and then up the block is the Sumner Projects. So these thousands of people live in these housing projects, and this is for low-income uh, public housing. Uh, the safe spaces for people of color have been coming smaller and smaller. So this block uh, was traditionally sort of a meeting space for all the people that lived in the different housing projects. Um, but there was a lot of other places to hang out. This block has now become kind of the only place where uh, people of color from those projects can, can hang out, have barbecues, have parties. They're just gonna take what they're gonna take. Um, they're building a, a high, <clears throat> high income um, development directly across from the projects. So it's almost like a, another experiment where they're gonna have the exact same amount of units for rich folks divided by a small avenue, and then have poor people on this side of the avenue. And I'm curious to see what's going to happen when, uh, when that housing, that rich, that in high income uh, development gets populated, because it's going to be a culture clash. I'm an alcoholic that doesn't drink. I'm a drug addict that doesn't use drugs. I've been sober and clean for 17 years, but I still have that compulsion and obsession, um, but I've channeled it to art. So. I create, <laughs> I create the way I used to drink and drug. Like I, I, I binge on art. Acrylic is a, <laughs> acrylics is my drug of choice right now. I had the, the greatest um, upbringing, I think. For me, believe it or not, poverty was important. Like uh, the city was, was depressed. I lived in a, I, I come from a financially disadvantaged family that had a lot of drug abuse and so on, so there was a lot of tension. Um, and out of that trauma comes creativity, or can come creativity. A big focus of my art has been to um, call attention to the beauty of people of color, uh, their divine nature, and then the connection between uh, African American um, street culture and traditional African culture. So these pieces are people that I see on the street, but depicted in, in my mind in divine ways. These papers are from Tibet. Um, I use a lot of stencils, uh, gold leaf and silver leaf. And again, like I was saying earlier, all of this stuff is a learning uh, experience for me. I have a concept and my concepts come from everywhere. Some of it is straight up laziness. Like I don't, I don't want to paint all of these flowers. I ain't got the time for that. So um, the paper does a beautiful job better than I could possibly do painting. When I was drinking and drugging, like the, the whole point of being an addict is you're the next one, right? The one you have, the drink in your hand doesn't matter. That's a foregone conclusion. It's the next one that, that you're striving for. And that's kind of how I am with painting. While I'm painting, 
that painting is already a done deal. I'm already thinking about what the next one is. The next high has to be better. This one is like, now it's like the next painting has to be the next high, you know? My message would be that we are uh, divine by nature. And we're more beautiful than we recognize. We're smarter than we recognize. We're more talented and gifted than we recognize. We are um, God made manifest on earth. And I feel like once we start to function from that understanding, uh, we will elevate all of us uh, as a race, as a people, as human beings. So <clears throat> I think that's my message above all, that, that uh, I want to get back to the understanding that we are more than just this flesh.